lot of money uh, per capita uh, to ESA. Uh, and therefore, all these, these ESA programs are very important for the space sector, uh, both in Wallonia and in Flanders. Um, so um, we, we play an important role uh, within the ESA. Um, and, uh, but as, as I said, the regional government can have its own policy in, in the matter of um, space activities that is mainly at the downstream level, as we say, uh, the translation of the, um, the space potential into uh, downstream activities in other sectors. That is typically a policy that is uh, being done by the regional government. Um, and we have dedicated regional programs for researchers, universities and research centers and funding for regional cluster organizations. Um, so here you see what has happened historically. Uh, here we have the foundation of the, the, the organization of the industry. Then there has been a study. Uh, we call it the Vario study. That is a study that has been done at the regional level to uh, to investigate what was the impact of the um, of the space business on the um, economic tissue of Flanders, uh, what what role space could play in other sectors and what role space could play for the government. Um, and therefore, um, it was decided to, to start a, a cluster organization, so where the research would be organized uh, between the industry, between research centers, and uh, with, with, the, with the aid of the government. And, and then, in the end, uh, there was a ministerial decree made at the regional level to, uh, to have the foundation of Flanders space officially, so only a year and a half ago. And, and that is where we are now. We have a three-year mandate uh, and we expect it to be prolonged. So, uh, we, the idea is that we, um, that we, well, as we started here in 1995 and have grown significantly uh, in, the, in terms of numbers of members, uh, we hope that uh, the industry together with the research centers and uh, together with the government, that we can increase the, the value of the space business in Flanders. Uh, and increase uh, our geo, geo return in ESA and, and further develop the space economy in Flanders. Um, so uh, to give you an idea of the type of uh, members that we represent, so on, at the industry level, we have typically um, uh, the, the small and medium size companies as well as a somewhat larger space industry. But on average, uh, Flanders has typically um, a, a high density of SMEs in the landscape. So we can also say that also within VRI and within uh, Flanders space, we have a lot of uh, SMEs. Um, and and we, we consider this also as a strength uh, for further growth. Um, what concerns the research institutes, um, IMEC may be well known uh, abroad, uh, maybe even uh, uh, in, in other parts of, of Europe, uh, as it is a very big uh, uh, university center uh, that is specialized in nanotechnology and in, in semiconductor industry processes. So it has the big uh, semiconductor industries as uh, as its clients. Uh, we have the University of Leuven, which is also well known. Uh, we have the the uh, nuclear uh, power center uh, research center, which is important for radiation uh, research. Vito, which is important for the earth observation research. Uh, von Karman is specialized in um, uh, typically in um, uh, streaming, so uh, 
airflow uh, and everything needed for aviation and for um, rocket propulsion. And then we have the Royal Military Academy, which has uh, several competencies. Uh, and we also have an incubation center uh, where uh, there is uh, a lot of collaboration to promote uh, startups and to uh, to make sure that they can grow to to middle-sized companies and uh, and become important players in the space sector. So this this gives an overview of the membership. Um, so you may recognize maybe some of the of these organizations they are here a little bit um, all over the place but some of them are uh, in the meantime they have become uh, affiliates of other um, organizations that have a more multinational character uh, like Thales Alinea space uh, uh, or, or Redwire space uh, and, and, and some others um our focus areas um so this is something that that has been agreed with the regional government so so on the one hand we we have the opportunity to make uh, calls for a number of uh, financial uh, subsidy programs um, the first one is oriented towards introducing and developing talent. So we have the opportunity to um, to to do funding for um, PhD um, work. So we can support 16 PhD mandates as well as for postdoctoral uh, fellowship mandates. Um, so the, the, we don't pay them directly. So it is actually the the, the fund for scientific uh, research that pays it. But uh, the the Flemish industry has, of course, the possibility to um, to to be represented there as a stakeholder in this in this type of space research. Um, the second point is to uh, promote competitiveness and the entrepreneurship in um, in the space sector in Flanders. And there we have the opportunity uh, to um, to do funding for what we call space lab projects. These are relatively small uh, feasibility studies um, or demonstrations that we can organize between uh, industry and research centers. Um, so the, the contribution per project is relatively small. But it is a very attractive um, uh, opportunity for uh, small and medium sized companies who might want to uh, see if what they developed is, is close to the market, if they can uh, maybe introduce it into new markets. Um, there is also funding uh, for startup companies, so typically lump sums of 50k euro. It's not that much, but it can make a difference for uh, smaller space startups. Um, then we have um, the possibility also to um, to support public tendering for new products and services. Um, so uh, so this is this is typically what we do. Um, in in the frame of of supporting uh, industrial activities downstream application developments um and and making sure that the the space industry can have um, its products um, let's say sold also in non-space um, um, types of activities um, and then also we uh, as a third point we want to make sure that we can participate with our industry in international programs. Um, so we, um, we have a specific dedicated Flemish program for that, we call it ICON. And there we have bigger uh, research uh, funding uh, numbers. So we, we can support, uh, let's say, uh, typically projects of around a million euros. 
to make sure that the Flemish industry can position itself for uh, international calls, uh, uh, either ESA calls or European uh, Union calls. Um, and then, last but not least, uh, Flander Space also uh, performs science communication. So, uh, so on the one hand, we um, we bring space to the general public, so we make sure that the general public is aware of what, uh, what the government and what the industry is developing in the space sector. Uh, so not only what it is generally developing, but also what, what typically uh, Flemish space industry is developing in the sector. Um, but we bring also, telt, uh, let's say, um, events in schools, for instance, secondary schools, where uh, pupils still have the chance to decide for uh, for a career in the space sector or in an in another scientific or technical sector. So we promote uh, STEM education. Um, and we work, uh, yeah, we, we also work together, of course, with university and student groups. And we work together with the, what we call the People's Astronomy Observatories. Uh, so we have in Flanders a network of astronomy observatories that do organize regular lectures for adults and, and young people. So, uh, Flounder Space is also supporting uh, that type of activities. Um, and, and another thing that is uh, relatively new uh, since the foundation of, of Flounder Space is the fact that we now have uh, thematic work groups that we can organize within the industry so that, um, that the members can find themselves around specific topics that are of interest to them. Because as you can imagine, there is an, an, a, an immense variety of, of space businesses. So we have, we have a lot of topics and it is important to, uh, to highlight some topics and to make sure that everybody finds a subject uh, what that, that is important for his company. Uh, so, so uh, we we have uh, different of them. I'm not gonna read them all of them, uh, but um, let's say that uh, a very important one for Flanders is Earth observation data and technology use, um, and there we have a thematic work group for imaging for space, where we want to see if the Flemish space sector can develop new generation of um, of sensors for uh, optical sensors for earth observation. Um, uh, CubeSats is also a very typical topic that uh, that is of interest in that sector. But of course, we also want to prepare the future and look at uh, to, uh, to see whether our industry can position itself for, for instance, future missions uh, to to the moon or to Mars. Yeah? But it's of course up to the members to decide what topic they they feel most interested in. Um, but um, yeah, so in this way uh, we we try to bring, uh, let's say, um, we try to spread knowledge and to make sure that everybody finds something uh, that uh, that is worth pursuing in collaboration with uh, other members. Um, as an organization, of course, we like to collaborate with other organizations. So um, this happens at different levels. Um, so uh, on, on the Flemish level, we work together with other sector organizations. So Flanders Make, for instance, is the organization of the, the mechanical uh, manufacturing industry. Uh, where we collaborate with uh, for certain topics. Um, the blue cluster, the blauwe cluster, which is also represented today, um, is, is an organization which, which we have organized uh, in February, uh, a big event, uh, uh, where, where both the members of the blue cluster and, and the space cluster came together. The blue cluster is the organization of, of uh, of the maritime um, 
organizations um, and, and we believe maritime and space can go together very well uh, to develop new products and services um, uh, flanders food uh, the organization of, of food industry and uh, here we have the the vil the, the flemish institute for logistics uh, as you can imagine uh, for for cars and rail and and ships uh, and all kinds of logistics uh, space can uh, can of course offer a lot of interesting solutions um, then uh, and at another level we also work together with a number of of belgian organizations uh, that are related to for instance here the aviation industry agoria flag um, uh, series um, and then on the regional level we also work or we like to work together with the um, with our uh, let's say uh, with with similar regional clusters uh, in other parts of the country so uh, with skywin in wallonia for instance we like to keep good relationships and to work together uh, in 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 potential events and and in uh, development of new projects and then uh, the last organization is flanders investment and trade which is more the export and trade organization of flanders uh, so uh, this is something uh, it's obvious that we work together with them so voila uh, i'm almost at the end yeah one topic that is still important to mention is that we are also one of the founding members of SME for Space, which is a European organization of space SMEs. And it's, it's more like an organization of organizations. So it, it represents in the end more than 700 space SMEs and startups. Um, so it has its own working, its own uh, organization, studies, uh, meetings, um, and it has a memorandum of agreement with the ESA SME office. Um, so in this way, we represent all space SMEs in, in Europe in a certain way. Um, and, and it is involved in several EU uh, projects. So yeah, that's all that we needed to, to tell you. So we are the only cluster organization in Flanders for the space actors. Uh, opportunity to discuss ideas and business opportunities. And uh, of course, like all organizations here, probably a platform for matchmaking and networking. Um, yeah, so these are the typical activities as you can imagine that we do. Um, and uh, we, um, it's also maybe good to know that all our members are automatically also member of SME for space at no extra expense. Voila, and these are our contact details. So maybe uh, it's time to ask if there are any questions. Okay. Uh, Wim, thank you very much. I would like, I would, I would propose to have all the questions gathered at the end, and then we can answer them really in a panel. Because maybe there will be questions that can be answered by different organizations at the same time. Is that okay for you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. and then um, Kini, I can't see you, but I hope you're there. Okay, there you oh, go. Hi, I switch on my camera. Um, apologies for. Um... The fact that I'm currently traveling and sitting in a bus, I hope you can all hear me. Um, it is uh, Natasha, you will share my presentation, if it's yes. correct. Um, yeah, let me see, because I have different things open in here. Uh, yes. Can you see my, my screen? Not yet, but uh, between before it, it also lasted a few seconds. Let me see. Yeah, I think it's coming. Okay, very well. 
okay if you put it like on the full screen yeah okay uh, hi all nice to meet you all my name is uh, Kini de Beule I am an uh, innovation manager I'm working for the blue cluster um, since one year but I'm also a project manager in the more re uh, ocean uh, related European projects but today I will tell you a bit more about the blue cluster which is the Flemish cluster for sustainable blue economy so all uh, economic activity at sea so um, and also already uh, well introduced by Wim thank you for that um, so we are one of the six spearhead clusters in Flanders and uh, you've also seen where Flanders is uh, strategic, uh, geographically uh, situated so that's also done uh, we do have a network of about 200 companies and uh, public partners that are so in some way uh, related to a sustainable blue economy. So what we mainly want to do is to improve the competitiveness of the industry. So we are there uh, to network, to gather uh, more ideas, to stimulate the industry in going for some innovative ideas and to request um, subsidies and grants at the Flemish government um yep so and also valorization of course is a very uh, important fact so we want to reduce the risk of innovation in five areas and we do that by developing or we have developed a strategy these are our roadmaps which i will introduce to you uh, in a few slides uh, we do provide finances subsidies through the flemish uh, uh, agency for um but, uh, innovation and uh, entre entrepreneurship so um, we discuss with them potential projects we discuss uh, potential consortia uh, with, with uh, universities and uh, uh, companies involved in the blue economy and then we decide whether it can be financed or not no not we don't decide uh, we decide whether it can be um, applied to the to the Flemish government. Um, we also organize events and uh, networking events like we did with the Flanders Space Cluster uh, in February uh, to, um, yeah, to widen our network. Um, and we try to uh, write down some uh, rules and regulations. We try to develop new policy, for example, in aquaculture and uh, marine spatial planning and uh, give advice to our governments so we want to be a good partner for the government. Uh, for your information, uh, the blue economy is, a, is quite an unknown, uh, well, not quite an unknown, but maybe a few years ago it was unknown, but it's a very strong uh, pillar. And um, it has uh, currently 5.2% of the Flemish uh, gross domestic product. So you, you have a comparison there on, on this slide uh, through other um, industries and or chemistry and food uh, compared to the blue economy. Uh, I hear something. Oh. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, it blocks. Yeah. Okay, there we go. There we go. So how do we um, basically work? So we develop strategies uh, through innovation and through networking. So um, as you can read, uh, we, we, we try to be, to, we, we do have a strategic course uh, for Blue Growth. Uh, we do uh, try to um, assist in innovation. And uh, we do that by making bigger networks. I'm sorry, I'm just uh, arriving in Antwerp. It's a bit difficult, um, but you can go to the next slide, Natasha. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have a lot of members and partners. So we have currently already more than five European projects in which we participate. Most of them are related to uh, the Mission Oceans, European Mission Oceans, um, so uh, and sustainable blue economy, but also the um, uh, blue tourism and and those kind of things. Um, we fostered like two hundred more than two hundred companies currently. Um, Fifty percent are SMEs, and um, like seventeen uh, are partners. Actually, are knowledge institutions, and then we have ten other other partners. Okay. Yes. So we are actually um, steered by a steering group, like a, a board group. 
and uh, here you can see uh, probably well-known companies um, that are uh, the core the core group steering group uh, members and those are actually the people or the companies that decide uh, which uh, strategy we follow that uh, imp improve or uh, confirm our developed roadmaps and that also advise uh, some draft projects uh, if they can go further to being granted by the Flemish government or not so if they will approve them or not. So those are the steering group members. And then our roadmap, so which are the areas uh, in, in which we are active. So you can imagine it's, it would be a coastal protection and the use of mineral resources like, like sand and, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, so the protection of our North Sea coast. Um, then there is renewable energy and fresh water production. Renewable energy currently a hot topic, but with all our newly developed wind farms, uh, ocean uh, alternative forms of energy, uh, ocean energy, solar wave energy, and those things. We have uh, the roadmap, maritime connection, uh, sustainable seafood and marine biotechnology, which would be mostly aquaculture. Then, as I mentioned, blue tourism and uh, ocean health and waste solution, which is mainly dealing with ocean pollution, plastics and oil spills and those kinds of things. Then we have two over, overarching roadmaps, which would be ecosystem services, and uh, can you go one? Yeah, and smart sea. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you. No, no worries, no worries. Yeah. So for each area, we have developed a roadmap, which I, I will show you two examples of roadmaps later on. Um, in our sustainable blue economy at the North Sea, we, we are uh, applying multiple use of space as a leading principle. So currently we have several projects running on a European level, level uh, where we would like to promote multiple use of space, of, of, as of course as, as Belgium and also the Netherlands, we don't have a lot of space at sea. So we need to make sure that we uh, can build and uh, like make collaborate all uh, techniques and uh, uses needed um, at one time. So we are developing this principle. <clears throat> yes, and then uh, one slide about possible or uh, links or opportunities uh, with the space technology. So as you know, we currently currently at sea or in a, in a, in a global global uh, glo globally we have some safety issues or may or possible issues um, induced by the Russian war uh, so we were thinking about uh, improving safety at sea uh, at our installations and trips or may and maybe to do this by remote techniques and cyber security um, if we have our installations at sea which might be the aqua aquaculture uh, sea farms or, or the energy installations, um, when we have a, a clear link with space technology, we can maybe reduce our costs, as there are, for example, ins inspection costs, if, if you can uh, avoid needing a boat for going there all the time, uh, for example. We can have uh, improved monitoring and data management, which would be of high use when we are trying to put in place these multiple uses. Um, at sea, we can maybe make improved docking stations for ships for tanking, for uh, hydrogen tanking, or uh, uh, for example, um, within our roadmap of ocean pollution, uh, we do still have uh, munition underwater in the North Sea, so the Belgian stockage place for for munition, and maybe we can better inspect the, this uh, munition because it's currently leaking. Um, and there are other links uh, with, with food and aquaculture. So these are these were a few ideas, are a few ideas. Next slide. Um, this is uh, the, our roadmap for maritime connections. Uh, so here you can see uh, three main topics, which is uh, clean shipping, smart shipping, and sea river shipping. And uh, as for the link with space, uh, we, we, we put an arrow at smart, smart shipping. Uh, this, so this would mean developing new techniques for semi-autonomous shipping in land and at sea. And we do have a few uh, small projects running. Yeah. 
an example of uh, our roadmap ocean pollution as i mentioned before we still have a, a ammunition depot uh, just in front of our coast and uh, we would like to see it cleaned but also inspected and uh, we would like to know uh, how much exactly is leaking Okay, and this is, is one example uh, for our, on our roadmap of ag aquaculture. So if we have these uh, sea farms uh, for aquaculture, we would benefit from an improved monitoring structure in the aqua farm. Um, yes, uh, for and a better inspection of, of, the, of the whole installation. Because if you click one time, more... Uh, an improved data infrastructure for the smart aqua farming, a better yeah, data logger, data transfer, uh, those things. Yes, for example, with with uh, drone inspection, and uh, also an improved energy yeah. infrastructure of uh, the so-called uh, concept of a smart aqua farm, which is which is not existing yet, but but uh, could be improved uh, by collaborating with the space or aeronautic. Uh, sector okay um again apologies for the fact that i'm traveling uh thank you so much for listening to me uh, i understand that um, that we will have this panel uh later 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 uh, in, in a few minutes so i will keep i will stay connected very well thank you thank you thank very you. much kimmy and uh, <laughs> that you have joined us in spite of difficult uh circumstances because you are going to Another presentation right now with Anne Overmere. Wishing you good luck there. Thank you again. Um, I think that the important lesson of, of the presentation of Kinney is that different sectors who would not immediately be connected uh, can only sum up in quality and innovation um, as joining together in networking. And that might be uh, the invitation to, 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 to join this initiative uh, as from the Andalusian side. Um, next presentation, I would be glad to uh, present you Mr. Etienne Pour Pourbet. Etienne is the director of Skywin, the cluster of competitiveness in the branch of Wallonia. He has a, a large trajectory in telecommunications, uh, in international companies as Alcatel, as in Thales, and he leads the um, the cluster of Skywin, both on the on the contrary as what is happening in Flanders. Uh, Skywin is uh, leading both aerospace and aeronautics. Um, Sin, without any more detention, please, uh, Etienne, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Natasha. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I will share the presentation. Yes. Wow. Is it this one? Sorry. Uh, I don't see yet the presentation. No. So. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Take some time, of course. Okay, there we go. I don't see yet the presentation. Uh, yes. Is the metric working? <laughs> Let me check. Sorry for this. Ah, it's coming, I think. Uh, no, it's not this one. No, it's, it's not this one. Not this one. So, sorry. There we go. Can you see it now? I see always uh, the, the Flanders space uh, presentation. Mm, no. Let me see why this is not going well. My apologies. Uh, 
um, sorry. They say presenting is not rocket science, but sometimes it seems to be. Um, no. Ah, it's a good one. Okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry for this. Okay, <laughs> so welcome time. everybody. Um, I will present uh, very uh, shortly uh, the Skywin cluster. So Skywin is one of the six clusters in the uh, Wallonie part of Belgium. So the, the south of Belgium, the French speaking part of Belgium. Um, we are in charge of the aeronautic space it was the historical uh, aspect, aeronautic and space, and size uh, five years. We are also in charge of the drone activity and the defense activity uh, in Wallonia. So if you can go uh, the next slide. Okay, thank you, Natasha. Uh, so some figures of the of the cluster. Uh, all the members of the, uh, in, in, in the beginning, so we start the cluster in 2006. We were uh, 86 members at this time, and now we are uh, 100, uh, 150 at this stage, uh, 150 members, uh, and 22, it was 147. You see the repartition, so uh, mainly uh, enterprise. Huh? We have uh, 100 SME and hey, uh, 18 large enterprise, and we have also all the university research center involved in aeronautical space drone or defense activity. Uh, one of the major activity I will come back uh, of the of the cluster of the, the six cluster in Wallonia and of course also of Skywin is to manage uh, twice a year so uh, a call for new project collaborative innovation project. And uh, you, you see signs the, the creation of the of uh, Skywin. There were 95 projects labelized by the uh, Wallon government. And uh, you see this was mainly uh, R&D project, collaborative R&D project, but also some investment project and training project. And all the 95 project, uh, the total budget of the 95 project is something like 290 uh, million euro. And you see the repartition of the, the global budget. Uh, one third, it's private budget coming from the enterprise. Uh, one third, it's public funding coming from the Wallon government for the uh, university and the research center. And the last third is uh, public funding from the Wallon government for the industry. I will come back to the, the process, of course. Alors, since uh, end uh, 21, we, we develop a new strategy uh, at Skywin based on five new missions. So we get from the Wallon government uh, a structural deal. So we get a, a contract um, for four years with five defined missions. I will explain the, the five missions. We are in charge, like I already explained, of four economic sectors, aeronautics, space, drone, and defense. And uh, in cooperation with all the members, we define five technological area, that's in French, domain d'action stratégique, technological area um, uh, necessary to, to have all the, the, the roadmap and the technological roadmap we want to, to, to reinforce to the, the project. Perhaps you can go a step the next slide. Voilà. So the four economic sectors, the, the, the biggest sector is aeronautical. Um, we have 90 members of the 150 uh, active uh, in aeronautic industry. You see the turnover, it's something like 1 billion 500 million. Uh, and the employment is 6,000 jobs, direct jobs. So if you got also the indirect jobs, you are, so you are at more than 10,000 jobs uh, involved in the aeronautical industry in, the, in Wallonia. Uh, we have uh, two world leaders, uh, two major companies 
uh, active in, in Wallonia. Uh, the first one is Sonaka, uh, active in the wings uh, leading edge slats. They are single source for Airbus. It will say that all the Airbus in the world have the leading edge slats uh, coming from, uh, from Sonaka in the, the region of Charleroi. And they are sharing 55% of the world market of this activity. Uh, the other big company is Safran Aero Booster, part of the, the Safran group, of course. They are making the booster and uh, they are making the booster of the new LEAP engine. So the booster is the first stage of uh, compression uh, at, uh, at the engine. Um, and uh, they are making so 16% of the, the LEAP engine and the LEAP engine is on all the Boeing 737 family and uh, also um, on the A320 and 21 uh, Airbus. So the booster that they are making uh, at Safran Aero Booster, it's also 60%, 60-60, uh, 60% of the world market. So it's a very uh, important industry, of course. We have also SAPCA. SAPCA is very active in, uh, for instance, actuators, and they are uh, going more and more in electrical actuators uh, for the aircraft. And of course, we have a lot of SME working not only for the, the big Wallon company like Sonaka of Safran, but they are also uh, in direct contact with the OM. Uh, they are providing services of uh, simulation tools of uh, this kind of activity. Uh, directly for Airbus, for instance, uh, also for Embraer or for Boeing. So uh, we have a very, very dynamic uh, group um, for the aeronautical. Uh, the other important activity is the space activity, 30 members, but I don't want to go too much in detail because you will get a specific presentation on the space domain uh, with Michel Stassar in a few minutes. So. Uh, can go at the next. Uh... And then the two new sectors, uh, defense, there are 30 members uh, active in, uh, in the cluster uh, Skywind uh, in defense activity. A lot of members are also active in aeronautic uh, activity, of course, in the civil aeronautic, and they are using dual use activity between defense and, and civil activity. Um, this is a collaboration with another cluster, but uh, it's an uh, internal detail for, for Wallonia. And the last one the, is the drone. Uh, it's a new domain for us, uh, also for Wallonia. Uh, it's still a growing sector uh, with 15 members and still very small SME uh, with a maximum 10 person. So, it's really something that we need to consolidate because uh, it's, a, it's a new domain for, for the, the industry in Wallonia. If you, voilà. Alors, like I explained in the beginning, we, get, uh, we got uh, in uh, one year ago uh, a global contract from the Wallon government uh, giving five missions to, to the cluster, to the Skywind cluster. The first one is to support the regional strategy and for this activity, one of the main domain is uh, to, to provide to the Wallon government roadmaps, strategic, so business oriented and technological roadmaps for the sector. So in, the, in our case, it's uh, aeronautic space, drone and defense, uh, but a roadmap at five and 15 years. So it's a medium term and also long term roadmaps. It's a challenge, of course, uh, but uh, voila. We, we need to, to, to give the, the good information to the Wallon government to, to have a, a global strategy and a global industrial strategy. Uh, one of the topic also very important is the project WINGS. Um, it's uh, a consequence of the COVID uh, pandemic um, due to the, all the problem of the aeronautical sectors during the COVID. Uh, the Wallon government decided to uh, make a, a major program, program to support the industry. It's a program of more than 100 million euros, so it's a, it's, a, it's a consequence. For three years, there are 19 uh, industries involved in this program, 
and it's a pure R&D program. So there are at this stage, uh, I think, 300 people working in the frame of wings. And the, the major activity of wings is to prepare the next generation of aviation, the, the, the carbon free uh, of the green aircraft uh, evolution. Uh, they will get, uh, we will give a, a presentation uh, dedicated to, to WINGS with all the, the members and also the minister during the next Bourget activity. So if you need some information, uh, we, we can share, of course, the, the date and uh, the location. The second mission is dedicated to innovation. Like I explained, we are making uh, a calls for project, collaborative project uh, twice a year. A year. Uh, collaborative project will see you need to have at least four members sharing the same project, two uh, at industry level and two at research level, and they need to work together on the same topic. And the other big mission in the innovation is to provide, of course, a technology watch, so uh, to help the our members to, to prepare the future and to see what, what are the evolution they need to prepare uh, to, to the innovative uh, project. Next slide. Alors, uh, the, the third mission is uh, related to, to economic growth, um, to make a lot of B of B2B activity. This, this activity, no, uh, this webinar, it's part of this kind of mission. Uh, uh, to share, uh, the, the, to prepare a meeting uh, during, for instance, Le Bourget, but also, uh, and this is new, uh, to participate to a scale-up program to help the Wallon SME, active, of course, in aeronautics space, drone of defense, um, to have um, uh, a bigger growth than foreseen. So we need to detect, and this is not so easy, of course, which are the, the good candidates in the SME already uh, existing, and but to, to identify um, which kind of uh, problem they have to grow, and then uh, to help, of course, uh, the, the PME in this uh, growth activity. Fourth mission is related to the talent development, the training activity, and especially the training activity related to the innovation. If you, if we are introducing a new uh, technology uh, uh, in, in the industry, we need, of course, to prepare also uh, the industry uh, for the new technology. And last but not least, <laughs> one, uh, the internationalization, all the aspects, and we are working together with AWEX. So AWEX is the, 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 the Wallon Agency for um, internationalization. Um, and we, we provide the, the, uh, the sector support to the AWEX. AWEX is very uh, active at geographical level in all the, the, all, the, all the world, but they are at general level. And so uh, all the clusters are providing expertise in uh, sectors to help, for instance, Le Bourget is something we are making together with AWEX. Uh, but all, the, all, all the, the other activity. Alors, the next slide. If, yeah, so uh, I will go very fast um, with the technological area. So this is uh, the domain at te technological level where we want to focus, especially for the innovative project. First is structures, propulsion, and flying subsystem in general. But uh, like you can read, um, integrating the energy of tomorrow. And then you can speak of hydrogen, synthetic fuels, hybridation, electrification, but all the kind of things. So it's not only uh, the structure like they exist now, but the, the next generation of structure and propulsion uh, integrating so the, the energy of tomorrow. The second topic is uh, new materials and new process to to make the materials. So you will get, of course, uh, all the aspect of composite, advanced composite, uh, additive manufacturing, um, 
new kind of alloy, uh, metallical alloy, uh, new manufacturing process. But we need also to see in this aspect all the uh, circular aspect. So uh, not only to develop new materials, but what is the future of this material at the end of the life of uh, an aircraft, of, uh, of uh, a drone. And voilà, so the circular economy is one of the, the, the important aspects uh, in this technological area. Next slide, please. The embed and communicating systems um, related, for instance, at structure level. So uh, to, to see uh, the onboard artificial intelligence, of course, but what are the, the new kind of thing, uh, for instance, new sensor that you, electrical sensor of electronic sensor that you put in the wings of that you put in the, in the, in the materials also. So of this aspect, uh, and if uh, the, the systems are more intelligent, they need to communicate. And if you need to communicate, you need, you need to see also, sorry, uh, to uh, control uh, the security of your communication. So the cybersecurity for this kind of information is also very important. Uh, data economics and artificial intelligence. It's, of course, uh, general topics for, for everybody uh, relate to the industry of the future, the industry for zero, relate to the Earth observation. Uh, but also for the maintenance bench, more and more you have very uh, slim system, intelligent system, and they are sharing a lot of information. You need to define which is the important information you need to, to trace, to follow. Uh, and so you need to have uh, arti artificial intelligence to, to, to find the, the good information in the terabyte of uh, info you, you get from the, the airplane. And last but not least, simulation, modeling, and test facility. Uh, like I already said, we have a lot of PME active in simulation and modeling uh, technique. They are editing specific software, uh, and they are providing the software to Airbus, to, to Boeing, and uh, to, to major company also. And test facility is very important. We have uh, in Wallonia uh, several uh, ground test and physical uh, test facility. Um, uh, available and uh, it's a, really an asset that uh, it's a service that uh, we can provide not only to the Wallon company but uh, to, to all the European company of course and to uh, finally uh, I will just focus on the collaborative R&D project what is one of the of the major activity so what is a collaborative project in Wallonia? It's uh, something where you can access to the maximal funding level authorized by the European community. So for a SME, the funding uh, can go up to 80%, 65 for a large company, 100% for university, and 85 for a research center. You need to be at least two Wallon company, with at least one SME in the two, and to Wallon University Research of uh, University of Research Center. But I will explain also that there is, uh, uh, voila, so the budget you see for the four people, the four members is something like one to four million euro, two to five years. Uh, TRL is four to six. So we don't go to the, the real prototype. We, we, we are still at uh, TRL 6. And what is important is the last slide. Sasha, if you can go a step. Oh, sorry. Ah, voila. That the project are also uh, now available for international cooperation. Like I explained in the beginning, it was only two Wallon company and two Wallon research, uh, research center. No, it could be, it can be, one plus one plus one plus one. So one Wallon industry and one research center coming from Wallonia, but one industry, large or small, and one academic in, uh, of uh, research center 
coming from uh, a partner, inter international partner. Of course, the funding from the Wallon region is going only to the Wallon body, not to the international one. But uh, we can we can work together, and we have already uh, two projects with Canadian partners from Quebec, and two uh, other projects with French partner. But it could be uh, also Spain partner. Huh? Uh, so. If you need more information of this kind of uh, mechanism, uh, I'm of course ready for the question, and uh, we can organize something uh, specific at Le Bourget uh, to see if we have uh, some uh, cooperation possible for international cooperation in the frame of a uh, uh, project. Voilà. There we are. It was not too, too long. That's and, perfect. Uh, the, the idea is now, I think, to, to give the, voilà, to focus to the space activity with uh, Michel, who is in the, in the Skywind cluster, the specialist of all the space domain. Thank you very much. Thank you, Etienne. And uh, as, as you well said, uh, collaboration is uh, very important platform to 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 achieve bigger yeah. projects. Uh, Michel Stasser, he's deputy director of Skywin, also with a large uh, experience in uh, both in the industry as well as a public servant in the cabinet of the Prime Minister of Wallonia in matters of aeronautics and airspace. And actually, as I said, deputy director of Skywin. Michel, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. Uh, he uh, hello, everybody. Then you can turn to the next slide. Uh, and uh, yes, a brief map in order to, to, uh, to explain you where are the main area where space uh, traditionally and it's quite new, a new axis. Then on the horizontal axis, you can see two traditional area of industry in Walloon region, Liège and Charleroi on the left and Liège on the right with this kind of companies, huge companies, uh, as already said by, by Etienne or Safran, for example. On the left side, there is also Sonaka active in, in the space sector. And there is a new access coming from Brussels to Luxembourg, uh, going through Louvain-la-Neuve with new actors, main, mainly oriented in new space. And also with Galaxia, with the ESA ESEC, uh, area. Uh, it's a center of ESA. The ESEC will say European Space Security and Education Center. I'm going to come back to this security and education uh, topics later. But the, you can see the repartition on, on this uh, on this map of the of the actors. On the next slide, uh, you can see also the repartition of of the 40 actors across sec seven segments. And uh, as you can see. With the VRI, the, 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 the Flemish, the Flemish uh, space sector, we are quite the similar size, uh, with 40 actors, uh, with around 300 million euro of of uh, turnover and of jobs, around 2,000 jobs, direct jobs, uh, and you can see for the people who know the, the space sector. Uh, sorry, back to the previous slide, uh, you can see the seven column. There with preparations for space with this the test uh, part of of the of the space space transportation will say launchers mainly earth observation satellite satellite communication and navigations cyber cyber security is a new access uh, a new segment very important I'm I'm coming back to that exploration naturally and space educations and the repartition of the of the actors is is there. On the next slide, I'm going to have a brief and very uh, with picture that's sometimes very interesting to see pictures uh, in a presentation uh, concerning the preparation for space. Preparation will say uh, naturally mission definition with the, some company, uh, competence in that uh, in our, uh, in our uh, cluster. But test, uh, as uh, Etienne said, is very important because we cover in Wallonia all the kind of tests addressing vacuum vibration optics cryogeny and mainly so, sometimes combine this uh, this four uh, challenges vacuum vibration optics and cryogeny under Liège space center uh, telecommunication naturally for with an echoic chamber 
Uh, radiation hardness is something very important also uh, around the University of Louvain-la-Neuve using a cyclotron uh, well known there, uh, using different kind of uh, uh, beams uh, for ions and neutrons and protons and not really uh, software testing facilities that, that cover the preparation for space. In the next slide, you can see the second step we have to launch. And mainly all the activities in Belgium addressing uh, space transportation and launcher Oops. are uh, located in, uh, in the south parts of Belgium. It's tradition coming from uh, the, the, uh, the heavy industries or maybe coming from aeronautics industry too, because we cover naturally the structural parts who are quite similar, but sometimes very different. So, but at the early beginning was very similar than aeronautics. That's why we are uh, working on the structure of Ariane, uh, naturally also the actu actuators. We speak about actuators on our aircraft, but also actuators for engines. And simulations is a permanent uh, competence that we have uh, go through all the different activities in space. Engine parts, uh, that's very important. Kind of the carburetor, the, this is the, uh, the flow regulator uh, of, of the engines is are made in in Wallonia for Ariane uh, on board electronics uh, on our Ariane 5 for example 50 percent of the electronic uh, electronics on board of Ariane 5 were made uh, in, in in Wallonia a little bit less now uh, with Ariane 6 and naturally on board software for for uh, and, and on board electronics, I've said also on the launcher, on the on also on the satellites and on board software with uh, the Vega uh, launcher. On the next slide, you can see naturally Earth observation. I'm going to come back to very more in details in the future, but Earth observation address upstream, small satellites, structure. Um, an instrument on board of equipments of small satellites. That's something we, we developed uh, very seriously, uh, actually. The ground segment, naturally to re reception, uh, the management of the, of the flight. And after that, the downstream, that's the applications using the data we collect on space, Earth observation, uh, radar, uh, and different hyperspectral uh, also camera. On the next slide, we arrived to another uh, pillar with SATCOM and communications and navigations. Uh, that's something important now with the uh, optic telecommunication. You can see an experience made dur during this uh, winter of optics telecommunication from the uh, ESA stations in Redu in Wallonia with this uh, uh, beam of laser beam in green. Uh, and you can have a, a picture of the different elements there of the ESA station ESEC, with also addressing all the in-orbit testing for Galileo and so and so. In the next slide, we go to cybersecurity. It's a new access, a very important access. I'm going to explain why in the in a, in a few minutes. Uh, where naturally all the core competencies are actually uh, bring together with all the actors uh, around uh, seven to 10 different actors now active in cybersecurity in, in Wallonia. On the next slide, we uh, can have some pictures concerning exploration. Exploration is still something important through the support of ESA and the BELSPO, uh, the federal uh, government naturally concerning that. I'm not going to, to pay, stay a long time on it. Uh, on the next slide, the, and the last pillar, are going to address education. Uh, it's important education. We have the chance to have on board, and you can see on this picture, uh, our, uh, Europa 2. Uh, that was the, the yes, the, the grandfather of Ariane. Uh, the first explode, and the second one will never launch. And we have the chance to have it on the Eurospace uh, Center with uh, a place where the people from 6 to 18 years could be um, be um, experience made on robotics made with a different uh, moonwalk, uh, spacewalk, uh, Mars village, and some, a lot of things like this. It's quite unique in Europe. Uh, there is one in uh, Toulouse, 
uh, there was there were one in Bremen in Germany, but the the remaining the remaining one is this one is the Aerospace Center in Belgium, uh, and we have to also to point the ESA Education Center as ESEC, uh, with the concurrent uh, design facilities with the support of ESA, uh, and CubeSub development are be, are made there also. Then back to, to the, the strategy of, of space uh, activities in, in Wallonia. Then naturally we have seven, uh, we, we covered practically all the uh, space segments in Wallonia, but we have to focus. And we have made this exercise, exercise last year with the support of the regional government. And we, it's quite easy to, to understand what we have done. Uh, we have made the analysis of accessibility of our companies to the market and the attractivity of the market. And we decide to focus on two different areas. You can see the two red uh, circle there on small sat and Earth observation and space and, and, and naturally also cybersecurity and space transportation. In the next slide, I'm going to go more in details concerning uh, this. And you can see naturally on the on the mapping of the, the, the actors that we have a quite uh, minimum um, weight for to to address this uh, these two huge challenges and in the next side uh what 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 are we talking about when we speak about earth observation industrial chains more than 30 actors involved in fact uh, we start from upstream segments platforms equ equipments and payloads ground segments and naturally data management and EO services. And through those, all these activities, cybersecurity is the key words for, for, the, for the future in Wallonia. And for space transportation and in, in the orientation of Rio Zero uh, launcher, we have more than 15 actors involved in this uh, value chain in, in Wallonia coming from the launch vehicle manufacturer, the ground segments, and naturally the launch services. In the next slide, uh, that's what are the target for Earth observation up to 2025, this is tomorrow, in fact. Uh, what we have done, actually, uh, we bring the targets to bring the industrial and commercial maturity in, two, in 2025 uh, at international level, much more than actually, it's quite good, but we have to really reach this this uh, this target in the upstream and in the downstream. And how to do that? Uh, we have the chance to have uh, in a card in the, in the frame of the, of the support of the regional government. To, we have selected three industrial collaborative projects uh, in the air, Earth observation uh, activities. They start in January, uh, they work. It's really purely industrial act, uh, activities. Uh, we also decide to structure the research of capabilities of, of, in Earth observation in the different entities we have on our uh, regions, university, region centers, uh, on which challenges to reach the objective of the industries uh, addressing Earth observation. And we, have, we are going to start now, uh, in, two, in one week now, uh, the, the launch of 20 PhD and postdocs dedicated to Earth observation. And to this point, I'm sure that we, are, we have not enough, uh, naturally, PhD and postdoc in the different uh, area uh, of Earth observation we are focusing. Then it, this PhD and postdoc naturally are open to the uh, 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 foreigner uh, and abroad of, of, of Wallonia. Then do not hesitate to uh, stay aware of what we do because we need the best one in order to reach this uh, target for industry to have this PhD and postdoc support, naturally. Uh, naturally, we have to accelerate, accelerate and to integrate the cyber challenge as uh, previously, previously said for Earth observation domain. In the next slide, uh, we focus on uh, reusable uh, launcher and the target is exactly the same target to have a, a maturity and a naturally to be, to be well known at open level by 2025 in a reusable launcher subsystem. Then we have to develop and manufacture new 
electronical equipment that really the challenge are different for reusable uh, launcher than previously with the traditional launcher. And for that, we also have 10 PhD postdocs dedicated to that. And for this area also, if there is in Andalusia uh, or, or in Flanders too, naturally, uh, very good uh, PhD and postdoc guys, they are welcome to support this uh, strategy uh, in, in Wallonia. Then we have the, the money received from the regional government for this PhD. Uh, that's very important. Uh, the, the amount is quite uh, important. In total, for uh, the, the PhD, it's around 20 million euro. And also what we have done for also to support the, this strategy is to share the equipments uh, through the different university and research centers in order to avoid naturally to, to duplicate this. Uh, the, the different e equipment and uh, the, the support there is quite heavy, heavy to uh, more than 10 million euro in order to buy new equipment to to uh, reach this target of uh, uh, of the strategy. In the next slide, uh, I just make a short uh, debriefing of the support that we have. Then all these uh, actors in the PhD and so are going to be part of a new uh, virtual uh, university. We call it Joint Research Institute for Space. Brings together all the actors of the research with the PhD that people previously said, but also the industries, uh, Skywin and the Walloon administration in order to work together to this unique objective. Uh, the date for the, the, the launch of Joint Research Institute for Space is in a couple of weeks in front of us. Uh, naturally, we have to support the new space environment. Uh, we have the chance to have a space seats funds hosted at Wallonie Entreprendre. It's a, it's a regional uh, tool for supporting this. Uh, we also support the development of startup with the Galaxia Space Innovations. It's also ESABIC that is well known. And we, ha we have the objective naturally to, do, to support this roadmap to break the silo between the space sector and in emerging digital technologies as AI and cybersecurity. We organize uh, to, with Flanders and with Luxembourg, for example, uh, in two days, in Luxembourg, an AI for Copernicus Day, we brings together the actors of AI and, uh, and uh, Earth observation in order to really reach the target of a low-cost Earth observation services. Uh, naturally, we have to articulate to articulate this strategy with federal science policy, BELSPO, uh, as a leverage effect of what they do. I remember the. The, the, the figures given by by very just just before uh, and naturally something important too uh, to say that we have to articulate this strategy also with the space for defense funds that's something very important and it's a possi possibility of cooperation between Belgium also and Spain that really on this uh, on these topics of uh, space for defense yeah and that's it for for the space I have, I hope I'm not too long but with a lot of pictures, sometimes it helps to, to have a better ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Michel. Well, sometimes pictures uh, say more than a thousand words, but I think that your, your explanation was uh, crystal clear. Um, thanking you very much for that. I would uh, like to give the floor to Bart Jorissen. He is the last uh, missing piece of the puzzle of the Belgian industry of space and aeronautics. Bart Joris precedes the um, flag cluster. It is the Flanders uh, aeronautics, and uh, he will be happy to, to present you the activities of this branch in the Dutch speaking part in the Northern part of Belgium. Thank you, Bart. All right, thank you very much, uh, Natasha. Are you hearing me? Yeah. All right. Loud and clear. Pero muchas gracias, Natasha, para esta invitación. Eh, eh, me gusta mucho presentarles nuestra industria aeroespacial en Flandes. Y entonces voy a continuar en inglés para... Hace mucho tiempo uh, que he hablado español. ¿eh? 
but uh, I thought to address all of you in uh, your uh, your language. And uh, I'm already struggling. Ah, okay, this way. Uh, so um, it's my pleasure today to uh, present you the Flemish uh, Aerospace Group and give you an industry overview. Uh, first, a bit on myself. My name is Bart Jorisa. I am the business group leader or director, so to say, from the Flemish Aerospace Group. Uh, I am above all an aerospace enthusiast and a strong believer in the advantages brought by national collaborations and international collaborations to cope with the challenges we as European aerospace industries are facing. Uh, and uh, you also find my contact details here. Now, uh, Agoria Flag, so the Flemish Aerospace Group today is part of Agoria. Agora, Agoria is the Belgian Federation of the Technology Industry. We are representing uh, a bit over 2,000 companies uh, that employ in total uh, roughly 321,000 employees um, and 70% uh, of our uh, members are small and medium-sized uh, enterprises. So the technology industry is by far the largest industry in uh, Belgium. Now, we do have a lot of uh, business clusters. Uh, I believe for the purpose of this presentation, Two business clusters are relevant, and the first one is um, FLAG, and the Flemish Aerospace Group. Uh, so while we are regrouping all the companies in Flanders active uh, in the aerospace industry, and it is our aim to support uh, these companies, to uh, support the development of aerospace and related technologies, and to improve the visibility of the Flemish aerospace industry. And, Hence, therefore, also the reason why I'm gladly to participate in an event like this. Uh, FLAC uh, today represents roughly 78 uh, companies uh, that employ uh, a bit over 3,000 employees and are good for a turnover of uh, 1.2 billion uh, euro. Now, uh, another uh, business cluster that might be relevant for this presentation is the BSDI, it's the Belgian Security and Defense Industry. And uh, they are uh, regrouping all the Belgian companies active in the defense uh, related uh, activities. Um, so we are, as FLAG, closely working together with the BSDI for military aviation uh, activities or projects. And we also work uh, with uh, VRI and, uh, and Skywing on Space for Defense projects. Now, what do we do as, uh, as industry clusters? Uh, of course, we cater for our members' interest. On a political level, we facilitate uh, networking between our members. Um, uh, we develop uh, business opportunities by organizing attendance at major business events and uh, like Le Budget, for instance, and, uh, and we try to work uh, within a well-functioning triple helix uh, structure. And um, we are also a member of the EACP, the European uh, Aerospace Cluster Partnership, of which the uh, Andalusian uh, cluster is also a member. Now, a bit more on the Flemish aerospace ecosystem. We have uh, 78 members, as I said before. Uh, five of them are considered to be tier one players, uh, uh, delivering um, assemblies or uh, systems to the OEMs. And roughly 23 are, can be considered as other manufacturers, uh, often suppliers to these tier one um, manufacturers. But we have uh, 25 technology suppliers and distributors, uh, distributors of air part, of parts and components, and technology suppliers. Uh, they, uh, these also include suppliers of transversal industrial needs uh, to achieve design and operational excellence. 
we work closely together with the research and technology uh, organizations. Uh, we have about uh, 12 universities and knowledge institutes uh, being members of our organization, and we have uh, seven other type of organizations like uh, companies uh, supplying services, uh, certification uh, uh, related to certifications, for instance, or MRO activities. So I think that is a well-balanced uh, ecosystem. Uh, the markets our uh, members are active in, uh, so they are uh, both active in civil aviation and military aviation um, projects and uh, advanced air mobility is what we consider to be a new market and there is certainly uh, a big interest in exploring the opportunities in these markets as uh, this emerging market uh, has to offer. Um, now we do uh, have a variety of com uh, competences um, available in Flanders just uh, to name a few of them, uh, we have uh, companies uh, active in airframe and wing structures. We have uh, companies active in uh, avionics and embedded systems, engine parts, uh, gearboxes, for instance. Uh, we have uh, companies uh, active in power electronics uh, for communication and radar systems, and we have uh, MRO uh, companies um, specialized in MRO and sustainment uh, activities. Now, mission driven innovation policy is a buzzword uh, these days, uh, also in Flanders. Um, we are uh, working closely together in a triple helix structure, uh, trying to align the vision of our industries with both the vision of uh, universities and the government in order to support uh, research and development of new and disruptive technologies. Uh, technologies that we all need in order to uh, achieve the goals set out by the, uh, by the European Union uh, more precisely to become a carbon neutral uh, region by uh, uh, 2055. As a first step, uh, also in Flanders, we developed a technology roadmap. Uh, this is also, um, as Setien said, a, a long-term uh, roadmap. Um, and um, subsequently, we are defining the major technology pillars uh, that we will be working on in Flanders. And uh, I must say that this is at this stage still work in progress, but I think uh, that we can already depict three major pillars uh, being airframe and wing structures um, with the design of the, uh, the wing of the future, uh, new materials that can be applied for this wing, uh, et cetera. We have the hydrogen storage. Uh, what are the design parameters? Uh, how can this uh, tank be integrated in the uh, airframe, uh, the fuselage or the wind structure, and embedded systems uh, to transport the hydrogen? Um, and then the third pin uh, is uh, systems with data processing sensors, fiber, and thermal management. Um, and we are uh, at this uh, over the coming weeks, we will. Uh, we are uh, defining or we will be defining different projects uh, within these, uh, these different pillars. Um, obviously, this is not, not something that we can do uh, on our own in Flanders. Uh, so uh, we are uh, or we look forward to work closely together uh, with uh, Skywin, uh, our uh, Wallonian counterpart. But uh, for sure, and that's a call to action to also the uh, Andalusian uh, industry, uh, uh, please reach out to us for more information. And for sure, we are looking forward to learn more about your technology roadmaps, the touch points uh, that our roadmaps have, and the topics that we can uh, jointly uh, work on. Um, and then uh, final but not least, we are, as um, Skynwin already mentioned, uh, at Le Bourget, eh, the Paris Air Show 2023. You can find us at the Belgian Aerospace booth in Hall uh, 2B. 
here in the presentation, you find a list of the Flemish uh, participants that uh, that uh, you can find at Le Bouche and uh, going with the idea that you will also receive the presentation. Uh, here in the presentation, you'll find a link to Agoria flag uh, for more details on the cluster and our members and my personal contact details. And I would like to call it an end of my presentation, Natasha. Well, thank you very much. Um, I will be happy to share uh, the presentation. I will also discuss with, with Skywin if we can share the, the presentations with all the people who is in the audience today and um okay yeah i'm very happy to present uh, juan roman who is uh, in our case last but not least the president of uh, our andalusian cluster of airspace in andalusia the, the cluster covers both airspace and aeronautics as drones and also the military uh, part of uh, the branch. Juan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for being with us today. Morning, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot, Natasha, for the introduction. Uh, first of all, uh, I need to apologize because I have not been able to join at the beginning of the meeting. So fortunately, I have arrived on time to, to, to do the presentation now about uh, Andalusia. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to, to attend this kind of event. I think it's, it's very good to put in connection all the capabilities from the different clusters. In this case, uh, uh, putting in connection Belgium with, with Andalusia. Okay, so, so now it's my turn to, to, to give you some uh, general overview about uh, what's our space in, in our uh, territory, in our region. Uh, first of all, uh, let me see how I can pass this. Sorry. Yeah. C can you? Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, Natasha, we can hear you. We, we can hear you, uh, Natasha. I'm not sure if you are listening. Yes, no, yeah, your your mic was out as well. But um, now it's okay. You know? Now it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. I was commenting that we are a very young cluster. We were born five, uh, just five years ago, but uh, before us, well, there is a, a long tradition building aircraft, more than one century uh, with different uh, companies as a tractor uh, that uh, have made to develop a, a big uh, auxiliary industry with more than 100 companies. Uh, we can say that our space possibly is uh, the more relevant industry in Andalusia. We represent more than 1.3% uh, uh, of the total GDP in Andalusia. For sure that uh, for the development of our business, it was key, the decision to uh, host the final assembly line of, an, uh, of, the, of the very relevant program, the A400M in 2006. Since then, uh, many other companies have uh, developed their business in, in the region. Uh, I would like to give you some figures uh, about our industry. Uh, the figures uh, are from our annual report in 2021. That means that are not completely updated. Uh, very soon, we hope to, to finish the 2022 report that uh, currently we are involved uh, on that. But basically, we can say that uh, there are more than 140 uh, companies in the region 
The majority of them are located in Seville with more than 100, but still there is a, a good representation in other provinces, mainly in, in Cadiz uh, and, and Malaga. When we talk about uh, the size of the companies, many times uh, people think in big companies as uh, Airbus. Uh, we also have uh, three uh, big uh, tire ones uh, in, the, in our cluster, uh, Alestis, Aciturri and Arnova. But at the end of the day, uh, the majority of the companies are SMEs, uh, two thirds, 71%. <coughs> are small and medium-sized companies. Uh, it's true that although they are not very big, there is a, a, a very high level uh, or degree of specialization. Recently, we have seen uh, some uh, mergers, some operation in order to increase the size uh, and their capabilities. In terms, in terms of the industry's uh, turnover, the last figure we are managing is about uh, 2 billion euros. Uh, before the pandemic, we were close to the 3 billion euros, but uh, obviously the adaptation was very, very high, very important, very relevant, with more than uh, or around 30% uh, of decreasing comparing uh, prior years. It happens more or less the same with employment. Uh, in 2018, we were uh, above uh, 15,000 uh, direct employment, but uh, last figure we are managing uh, were uh, 12,000 uh, 12, direct employment. Uh, the decrease of employment in any case have been less than the decrease on turnover. Uh, that that is an important message in order to 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 remark the resilience uh, of the companies in order to to maintain the employment. If we talk uh, about exports, we are the second uh, region in the country in terms of exportation. We represent a 39% of the total national aerospace uh, exports. And as you can see in this slide, uh, the first country is, uh, is Belgium with more than 26% uh, of our total uh, exports. Uh, the majority of them at the end of the day are uh, in Europe. Okay. Uh, we need to increase, in any case, uh, our level of business uh, abroad or frontiers. Uh, we have been used to work for uh, our relevant local Airbus plants, but the future clearly uh, uh, need uh, to, to go to other uh, international markets and not just Europe, as this slide shows. Also, we need to, to increase uh, our presence in other relevant markets as uh, the, US state, uh, uh, the, the United States that, as you can see, are not in this, in this ranking or East countries, uh, India, China, Brazil, this kind of, uh, of countries. If we talk about infrastructure, uh, I think that this is one of our main strengths. Uh, we uh, need to talk about three uh, industrial parks. One of them, uh, called Aeropolis, and located in Seville, is uh, a, a full uh, industrial park dedicated just to, to, aeropace, uh, to aerospace with close to 100 companies located uh, in, this same, uh, in this same area. But we also have what is called CBC, uh, another industrial area in Cadiz, and the Technologic Park in uh, Malaga. Uh, inside Aeropolis, in Seville, uh, we have the Advanced Center for uh, Aerospace Technology. It's uh, a 
an innovation center with high reputation that provides us uh, with uh, relevant projects related uh, artificial intelligence, avionic materials, uh, robotic, uh, this kind of new technologies. Finally, I would like to comment as well uh, the experimental flight centers uh, we have in the region. Uh, already running its atlas that is located in the province of Jaén. And very soon we will see a finalization of Zeus, that is possibly the, the, the biggest center for testing, training and assembly of unmanned uh, vehicles. It's very close where we are located in Seville, in the province of Huelva, and we hope to relaunch uh, at the beginning of next year. Uh, also, uh, I would like to uh, make a mention to the institutional support we receive as a, as a cluster. Specifically, uh, I would like to talk about two regional agencies, Stenda, uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, because you are the, the organizer of, of this, web, uh, this webinar, Stenda is the public corporation that helps uh, our companies to increase the level of internationalization. Um, as well, they attract foreign investment. Invest in Andalusia, on the other side, is the uh, agency that uh, promotes, attracts and helps uh, foreign companies to come to a region. Both are key in order to consolidate uh, and develop uh, our uh, sector and also to attract new companies to, to the region. Uh, for a cluster, it's very relevant as well the role that the university has. Uh, we have uh, universities in each of our province. Uh, they are public uh, universities, but also there are a couple of private ones and uh, some uh, very reputational business schools. As a cluster, for us, it's very important to collaborate with them. We have signed different kinds of agreements in order to develop mainly innovation projects where the uh, role of the university as a research center uh, are very, very important. Talking about our industrial capabilities, uh, this uh, uh, slide uh, show the distribution of our sales by program. Many times uh, Andalusia has been associated uh, just to military area. That's because we are hosting uh, two very important programs as, as the uh, final assembly line of the A400M and also the C-295 uh, program. Uh, that is because we have a very huge workload of uh, military in military uh, uh, site. But also I would like to remark that Andalusia has strongly participated as well in other uh, civil programs as it has been the 320 or the 350 and unfortunately we were a relevant role as well in the a 380 but you always uh, all of you know that uh, this program is currently disappearing uh, apart from the traditional aeronautic uh, step by step we are increasing our business in other areas are space that currently represent a 9% or general aviation or the sector of, of, of drones still uh, very, very uh, low in terms of sales. Uh, we also like to comment uh, that uh, we consider that the location of Andalusia is strategic because many times we say that we are the gateway that connect uh, Europe with uh, Africa. Uh, we are looking 
um, carefully what what is happening in Morocco that uh, the aerospace industry is developing at high speed. Currently, you know that the Spirit uh, are developing business there and around the Spirit uh, are creating uh, an important auxiliary economy in aerospace. Also, recently, uh, Arnova in Portugal has uh, taken control uh, of uh, um, an important plant in the city of Évora that uh, previously was owned by Embraer. Uh, Aranova is a Spanish uh, company. They are uh, partner of, of our cluster. And we are now analyzing how we can help them to develop uh, this couple of uh, industrial and big plants that, as I say, uh, they are in, in Evora. Apart from that, obviously, uh, most of our business come from, from Airbus that have an important presence in, in Spain. There is a relevant plant in, in Madrid, uh, in the city of Getafe, but uh, the, 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 their presence in Andalusia is very, very important with three different plants. Okay, talking about industrial opportunities, as I imagine everybody, uh, we are uh, looking uh, how we can participate in the uh, new initiatives, most of them oriented to the uh, zero emission target. Just to mention a couple of them where we have put uh, some big expectation would be the future combat air system, the FCAS, that finally the consortium has been established. It's true that possibly for the industrialization still need to wait uh, some years, but uh, now uh, the program has begun to, uh, to give the, the, the first step in terms of developing systems. And also the uh, Euromail uh, project, the, the big uh, project uh, developed by Airbus, Leonardo and Dassault, that uh, Andalusia uh, could uh, make uh, a relevant um, role as a, as a player. Okay. Uh, more about some industry opportunities for our region are linked uh, to the next uh, generation funds. Uh, many, many, a lot of money have been assigned to develop uh, the pro different productive uh, sector. In Spain, the national government uh, have launched a specific uh, program called the Aerospace Perte that um, have been mobilized uh, more than 2 billion uh, euros uh, from 2021 to 2025. Now it's our responsibility, not just from the government, also from the industry uh, to use, to, 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 to develop uh, this program in the best way to uh, ensure uh, Money, that the money is well invested uh, to help the companies and to help uh, our business. This is the distribution of the money, and as you can see, more of most of them are assigned to the space uh, pilot. This is because uh, the government finally uh, have decided to launch uh, the national uh, Spanish uh, space agency. And also, uh, our country is involved with Portugal in a very big uh, company, in a very big uh, project related uh, space. And that's the way I would like to finish my presentation. At the end of last year, we received, uh, we congratulate because uh, we received a very big news that uh, after a uh, a huge competition with different uh, cities in Spain, uh, the government decided uh, that uh, Seville uh, will uh, host 
the, the Spanish Space Agency. That uh, brings us a um, lot of opportunities to develop this, in this industry in the next future. Uh, now, we in the cluster, we have created recently um, a specific uh, commission dedicated to space business. We are receiving uh, new companies uh, that are working in a space that want to be close to the agency. And also our classic or traditional aeronautic companies uh, are looking how they can orient it, their traditional business to the new uh, capabilities that demands uh, the space. So hopefully we will see a big development of space uh, in the next future. Uh, that's our business and that is where we are involved. Okay, I think that that's all on my side. Uh, I have tried not to bore you with an extensive uh, presentation, but uh, the intention was just to give you a general overview about what is our business in Andalusia. Thanks a lot. Uh, and again, Natasha, thanks for organizing uh, the event. Very welcome. I, I thank you for this for this overview. I would like to thank all the speakers for for this uh, for sharing their knowledge and sharing their experiences in their own specific uh, branches. I would like to open the floor to the public in order to know if there are any questions, any observations, suggestions at this point. No, that's a very good sign. That means that everything has been crystal clear. Okay. Cesar, would you like to add something? No, I think that, uh, that we're all good. And at that point, I would, uh, Thank you once again, and as I told you already by mail and some by by voice, yes. we would uh, we are working at this point to see at what extent we can organize a moment of meet and greet at uh, Le Bourget. I know that you all have really agendas. Um, completely full. We're trying to find a moment where we can uh, overcross this uh, this uh, seminar, this webinar, and have you and give you the possibility to meet um, personally. I think it is already the case with uh, Wallonia and Andalusia cluster because you will be signing the the prestigious uh, project contract. If I'm not wrong. Yes. Yes. So congratulations for that. Um, I don't know if you want to say two words about that for the public. Well, um, maybe, you know, we have been uh, developing during two years through a prestigious project, uh, a drone strategy. So we did the first uh, study of the European value chain of drones. And we, we go to three countries to to study the uh, markets opportunities. We went to Canada, Chile, and uh, Africa. And uh, during Le Bourget, I think it's on uh, Thursday uh, afternoon, uh, we will present all the uh, results of uh, prestigious projects. And at the end, we will uh, sign a MOU uh, between Skywind, uh, Normandy Aerospace, which are the leaders of the project, and uh, Andalusia Aerospace. Uh, we are also trying to invite other uh, European clusters to to join this uh, strategy and try to have a unified uh, drone strategy at uh, European level. So we are working on it. I hope maybe uh, Hamburg or France Aerospace Valley will, will join uh, this MOU and uh, you will know that uh, at the end of June. Okay. Well, this is this this might be a call for for a collaboration towards Flanders. Wallonia is already on board. Um, give it a thought and uh, let me follow up this uh, opportunity to meet uh, to to make you meet all of you in Paris. And um, 
As for today, I think this is what the American Basketball League would call a dream team. Thank you once again for your presence and for sharing uh, your knowledge and your experiences with us. We'll keep in touch. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so very much. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.